Yeah, good morning, Orlando Approach, uh, Experimental 2222 Victor. We'd like to request an RNAV Zulu for 1A into Space Coast Regional if possible. And what was your topic of? You said RSSS? Uh, we're an experimental light sport uh, Vans RV12 22 Victor. Thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-nine, forty. Woo! I have a lot to update you guys on. And yeah, we're gonna talk about that too. So let's get into it. All righty, so I know it's been a long time since I've done a video in the little RV12, but let me explain. Basically it was down for the condition inspection and I did it all myself. I had to do some big jobs like changing all the rubber hoses on the Rotax 912. Um, so that took some time. And then shortly after doing my condition inspection, I said, hey, you know what? It's time to turn this plane into something serious. So I have made a very significant upgrade and it is right here. So this little guy is the Garmin GPS 175 certified IFR navigator. So that makes this little plane completely IFR capable and IFR legal. So I have just turned this tiny little two-seater airplane into a very capable IFR platform. So I'm pretty excited about this video because I have a feeling I'm gonna get a lot of comments saying, hey, isn't that a light sport? Aren't you not allowed to fly IFR with a light sport? Well, this little guy is an experimental light sport aircraft, meaning it really just falls under the experimental category. So once you get your airworthiness with an experimental light sport, you can make upgrades to the panel. So a lot of people put IFR navigators in it. And also there's one very important thing which actually makes this plane definitely legal for IFR, and that is in my operating limitations. If we go to my operating limitations, which are in my glove box. This was back when uh, it was certified with the FA. It got its airworthiness. You go to the end in the phase two, it says instrument flight operations are authorized if the instruments specified in 91.205, blah, 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 are installed operational and maintained in accordance with applicable whatevers. Okay, that is how you fly IFR in a light sport. So it's gotta be experimental light sport and it's gotta say that you are approved for IFR in your operating limitations. So let me show you how I did the IFR upgrade to this plane. And since it's experimental, I could do it myself. So that was a very fun process. It was pretty challenging, but it's working great so far. Still gonna practice with it and see how it performs in the real world. But uh, let me show you how I did that. And then we'll go for a flight and I'll show you how it actually performs the IFR approaches. My first step in converting my RV12 to an IFR platform was to do some research on the type of installs people usually do with the Dynon Skyview. And from what I gathered, the simplest way to comply with IFR requirements was to go with a certified IFR navigator that can communicate with my existing Dynon. The most affordable brand new system out there is the Garmin GPS 175. It took me almost a year to pull the trigger and spend the money, but I finally did it. I ordered the GPS with a pre-made 
wire harness and a Dynon Airing 429 adapter, which allows the Garmin to send nav data to the Dynon. The GPS 175 is GPS only, meaning it just needed the GPS antenna and no radio receiver like an ILS or VOR. So I'm only doing RNAV GPS approaches in this plane. I printed out a template for the Garmin and also Dynon Autopilot knob panel and figured out the most straightforward and ergonomic install I could do with limited experience and skill. Guys, see my GPS. The GPS arrived and I got to work disassembling my avionics bay and cutting holes in the panel with a rotary cutting tool. Okay, so I got the avionics bay opened up. Previously, I had my autopilot controls uh, top and bottom right here. I opened up this hole and then this tray happened to fit perfectly right in here. So this bracket was already existing on my plane. So that made it really easy. All I need to do is uh, just mount some little screws up in here on both sides. Now this thing right here, that'll slide right in there. I located the power lead from my 12 volt uh, plug and gonna split it off and connect it to the GPS. So uh, we'll see how it goes. The pre-made wire harness from Aircraft Spruce made things a lot easier. However, I did have to cut most of the wires since the install only needed five of the pins in the connector. Yeah, that's correct. Only five wires were needed to communicate with the Dynon. Creating pins for the D-Sub connector requires a special and expensive tool, so my new friend Bob at the airport was kind enough to help me create the five pins so I could complete the install. I also had to make a coax cable for the GPS antenna, and I made a simple bracket out of aluminum to mount the antenna under my cowling. And also my cowling is fiberglass so it doesn't interfere with the GPS reception. Once I completed the install, I turned everything on and gave it a test. I did initially have two data wires crossed so I quickly fixed that and then everything worked perfectly. Oh my gosh! Woohoo! My installation isn't immaculate, but it worked out well and everything is where I like it to be for IFR flying. But anyway, I think today is a great morning to take it up for a flight, do some approaches and see how it works out. So let's go have some fun. Today we're just gonna be trying it out um, and probably doing a practice approach into Space Coast Regional. Uh, yeah, so, uh, we will see how it goes. All right, one, three, two point six five, ready to go. Flight director, autopilot off. Flight director, vertical speed. Uh, we're using the Garmin GPS one seventy five. Arthur Dunn, traffic experimental two 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 Victor, departing runway one five to the south. Arthur Dunn. In this GPS test flight, I flew two RNAV 18 Zulu approaches into Space Coast Regional KTIX. It had been a while since I've flown IFR, so I brushed off the rust and made notes for improvement. Orlando approach experimental 2222 Victor. And who's on front of us? Yeah, good morning, Orlando approach uh, experimental 2222 Victor. We're 10 miles north of Arthur Dunn. Uh, here at the Space Coast. I'd like to request an RNAV Zulu for 1A into Space Coast Regional if possible. And 2222 Victor, Squawk 0362, maintain BFR, advise Space Coast Papa. Squawk 0362, maintain BFR, and we have Papa at Space Coast. 2222 Victor, radar contact position now stated, maintain BFR, turn right place heading 120, that's RNAV Zulu, runway 1A into Space Coast. And what was your type of stuff? You said Archer, sir? Uh, we're an experimental light sport uh, Vans RV12, 22 Victor. 22 Victor, left. Turn right, heading 125. 125 on the heading, 22 Victor. Remember, 22, 22 Victor, turn right, direct Couton. Right, direct Couton, 22 Victor. Alright, now we're going direct Couton. 22, 22 Victor, about 6 from Couton, maintain the park for Darnab. 
Clear our nav uh, for 1-8 Sulu approach and we'll maintain VFR 22 Victor. 1-4-2-5-6, contact Victor, 124.8. 1 4 8 Hello, Departure 1-7-7 Lima, miss 27 left. 1-7-4-7 Lima, Orlando, Departure traffic off the... If you look to that, you're... Are you in the turn? You see that traffic off the right? Yeah, we have the traffic inside. Maintain VFR to blow 2500, your discretion. 22 Victor, contact Space Coast Tower 118.9er. Over to Tower 118.9er, 22 Victor. Good morning, Space Coast Tower, experimental 22, Victor, about half a mile north of Fatad on the RNAV Zulu for 18. 22 Victor, Roger, after completion of that low approach, walk 1200 and either left or right down on departure approved. Roger, after the low approach, we'll stock uh, VFR and we'll do a right turn outward uh, to the north uh, for 2-2, Victor. All right, let's see how it does the glide slope. LPV. Armed for VNAV. There's our glide slope. Come on, baby, grab it. There we go, it's grabbing it. It's hunting a little bit. Alright, it's doing well. I just gotta slow it down. Can't really go above 100. Which is fine. And it's holding the glide slope pretty well. Let's take a quick break and talk about that scooter from the beginning of the video. This is the first Florida Flying collaboration I've ever done, and it's actually an incredible product. This is the new Varla Eagle One version two electric scooter, and it's perfect for commuting to and around the airport. Varla sent me this scooter and I've put over 30 miles on it in just a week, and I can honestly say that I have never ridden anything like it. Sure, I've ridden the little scooters that you can rent downtown. Uh, you got the app on your phone, but those things are complete pieces of junk compared to this. It's two wheel drive, has dual suspension, two disc brakes, and a range of 42 miles, and also a top speed of 40 miles per hour. 39, 40, woo! Alrighty, so not only do they advertise a 40 mile per hour top speed, it honestly gets 40 miles per hour top speed. It has plenty of torque to conquer all types of terrain and it folds in half for transportation. And for those who want to take it in the airplane, it weighs about 80 pounds, just so you know. But it has the power to handle larger riders and it's just an absolute blast to ride. All right, yeah, this thing has great suspension. Absolutely perfect for zipping around the airport or really doing a short commute like I'm doing back home, trying to beat the rain. Honestly, it feels like it has a turbocharger because once you get up to about 20 miles per hour, it just like kicks in an extra like boost. It's really incredible. Listen, I'm not one to promote a bad product on my channel, and I can assure you that this scooter will be a common cameo in my videos, even when the collaboration ends. If you're in the market for a fun, reliable, and portable method of transportation, this is it. If you use the code FLORIDA at the link below, you'll get a major discount on this scooter. Okay, thank you for sticking around, and let's get back to the approach. My gosh, it's doing so well. Ooh. Autopilot off. Disconnect. It's just bumpy down here. I'll we'll call that minimums. We're going to need that left down on departure instead of a right. We've got traffic inbound from the west. Roger, we'll make a left uh, down with departure. 2 2 Victor. That was awesome. I decided to request another approach, and I immediately felt more comfortable the second time around. So this time I could explain a little bit more about what was going on. 2 2 Victor, maintain the apart of Tucson. You're about 9 miles from there now. So I don't have Google search for my 1 8 inch station. We'll proceed direct uh, Kuton cleared for RNAV 18 Zulu approach, 22 Victor. Alright, let's see how it does. We're on 
on nav mode, GPS. To our plate. So, after Kuton, we go to Fatad at 1600 feet. After Fatad, we're cleared down to 1000 feet, up to Poppy. And then, after Poppy, we're going to have an LPV minima, hopefully, uh, down at 332 feet. Base coast, 118.9. Ready to go. And, uh, yeah. Alright, so we armed our V-nav. We have the glide slope coming in. Maintaining VFR. On the RNAV Zulu 18 into Space Coast Regional. This is so awesome. Here's our glide slope coming in. The pilot mode. There's its little porpoise. And boom. And there's our minima, look up, and there's our runway. On the way home, I shot one last practice approach into Arthur Dunn X-Ray 21. But next time on the channel, I'm planning to file IFR to show you what it's like to operate a light sport airplane in the IFR system. Maybe we'll even have a little bit of IMC. Not sure. But for now, thank you all for watching and please make sure to subscribe to this channel so I can bring you along on a real IFR flight in my RV-12 light sport airplane. And until then, blue skies, and I'll see you on the next flight. So excited. Love it.